back from a break after what was definitely the biggest upset we've seen so far tonight. As Ghost, one of the heavy favorites for this tournament, you know, the man who's so close to winning Hearthstone Masters Korea Season 6, dropping to Flurry in the Grand Final, and as all the glitz and glamour at Lotte World has been eliminated, will no longer be going to Apex Summer, will no longer be going to BlizzCon, one of the best performers in Korea this year, but not to be able to represent it at the World Championships. Yeah, but uh, his opponent played uh, pretty great, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what he can do on Saturday. I think, you know, overall, pretty solid play. Yeah, I don't know. For a guy that's, and, and you've mentioned Harsel, he's a little bit more well-known in the Korean community, even though we haven't seen him uh, on OGN before. He's not yeah. exactly a complete unknown. Definitely. He has played in the Hearthstone Clan Championship for Inven. I always mention this tournament somehow, but it is a team battle, so uh, we get to see a lot of the different players from one team. Sure. And uh, uh, from Team Overload, this guy was definitely one of the major forces who got Overload to win Season 3 of ACC, if I'm correct. Now sure. we're ready to load into <laughs> our last game. Uh -huh. All Time right. to see some Palmblad, Doa. Yeah. Finally. Oh, Palmblad. I mean, uh, easily one of the biggest names in Korean Hearthstone. This guy is a member of Team All Killers. He's been uh, pretty powerful over the last couple of years. Look and at that guy doing the mind control. <laughs> He's trying. His priest, of course, and went through the winner's bracket of the qualifier. Four wins, no losses. No priest in the deck list today. Sad day. Yeah, so this is sixth appearance all time in OGN. The four Masters appearances are perhaps what he's well known for season one, second at season two, went out in the round of 16, season four quarterfinals, season five quarterfinals. So his consistency certainly can't be denied. Well, I mean, he's been in four out of six seasons we've had. So with uh, the way the qualifier system has worked, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, the first two times he was here, well, the first time he got through the qualification. Only the first one was VSC. Yeah. The, the second one was VSC because he was a complete unknown in the first season he joined OGN. So on today is Sanagi from Pohang Shieldbearer. That's a cool team name. Interesting. Pohang is a region in Korea, so I guess he's from that area. Maybe he loves ancient Shieldbearer. Or it just a be. Shieldbearer. That's true. Took out Rini Hour. That's a man that Doe is acquainted with in the qualifiers. That's a man that everybody's acquainted with in uh, Korean Hearthstone. He was a big force early on. Hasn't, of course, been doing as well lately, but uh, certainly a memorable guy. So talk to me, us about these duo tournaments. Well, we don't see a lot of these in the Western scene. It seems like the most underwhelming <laughs> tournament achievement that we put out for anybody at OGN. That's all he's got, so you got to be happy with your second place in the tournament, you know? Yeah, and he definitely has a lot of fans in the crowd. Well, the fans will have to help propel him because he's against one of the more consistent players in OGN Hearthstone history in Palmblad. Yeah, there are at least like eight people in the audience wow. who are waving <laughs> and cheering for this guy. Well, you gotta start somewhere. Let's see what the bands are. I'm really curious. I'd imagine it's gonna be Warrior. Ooh. Okay, ooh, a Warrior uh, gets through? Are you kidding me? The wow. Shaman taken away from Palmblad. Crucially, that means Warrior gets through. Warrior, predictably, Dan banned from Sonagi. End result, the Druid Mage, Warrior, and Warlock versus Shaman Hunter, Warlock, and Druid. So the mind game here is about, at least on paper, trying to cue what we imagine to be a mid-range Hunter against the Warrior from Palmblad, otherwise it's very risky to leave the warrior up. I guess so, and I mean, Palmblad is a very popular streamer in Korea, so Sonagi probably has a lot of knowledge about this guy and what he likes to play, usually, so that probably helped him to decide this picks and bends. I mean, if Sonagi's running Yogg Druid, I think that's pretty solid versus most warrior archetypes right now as well, and Shaman can, you know, at least go 50-50, depending on the deck, so yeah, I think it's reasonable to let the warrior go through. Three matches down, one to go. Best of seven between Palmblad and Sanagi to see who our last qualifier a back summer semifinals on Saturday will be. Will be the veteran Palmblad or the first timer in Sanagi? Let's get into game and find out.
opens his arms Ooh, wise to embrace you and invite you to this final match of the night. Palmblad versus Sonaki. Palmblad will be beginning with that warrior. Hey, there's Gorhal your favorite card, Doa. Sweet. I do love Gorhal. Gorhal in Dragon Warrior is interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, it depends on how you build the Dragon Warrior. You can go for something a little bit slower if you're expecting more control matchups. Gorhal's always shined in that regard. So you see it once in a while. I think it's a reasonable thing to include. Have any card to synergize with Alex Strauss's champion in the starting hand, so we're gonna mulligan pretty hard for a dragon. Fun trivia for you guys. Uh, Sonagi's Korean IGN means I feel icky. <laughs> wow. So we know uh, what his favorite card is already. RIP and peace, Leopard Gnome. Oh well. It was, I, the nerf was warranted. Um, that took a long time with his mulligans, even though on the latest patch that's no longer you an interaction. Hive. Uh, yeah, that's the bookworm from Palmblad. Yeah, pretty much any dragon deck you're running, you're going to be running two of those. It's it's so good. Three six is a hard body to remove. Confirmed. Nice one. Yeah. And the ability to remove uh, a minion with three or less attack rather than two or less with like a Kodo or something is pretty great. I like how his favorite card is the two one version of Lemon Oh, a little cute touch there. Yeah. Starving True. Buzzard as his least favorite card. That's uh, harkening back to some old terrible times when that wasn't a five mana card. Yeah, there was a time when it was a two mana card, so you could go Starving Buzzard, Unleash the Hounds for five mana, and draw just an enormous amount of cards, and get a bunch of charge minions. It was insane. When you say that, it sounds like it was really recent, mm. but that's probably a lot of our viewers that don't remember that time at all. Yeah, I mean, that's why I'm bringing it up, because it's been like three years now. Two and a half years Two or years, so? I think. Something like that. Because before that, Unleash the Hounds was a completely different card. Well, I mean, there was also Unleash the Hounds at two mana, and then Unleash the Hounds at three mana no, before. I'm before the two mana. I didn't even play her so back then, but Doa probably remembers us. Did you see it first to the beast or something? Uh, you used to do something completely different. Unleash the Hounds, yeah, I think, you might did be have right. an iteration, like you yeah. said, a long time ago. There's been a few. But the Buzzard Unleash combo was the like bane of everyone's existence early on. Wasn't okay at four mana, it wasn't okay at five mana, so it's now eight mana. Just don't see it anymore. Wow, Sonagi is going all in here. Yeah. Well, why not? It even gets uh, another Raven Idol. Ravaging Gore would be a pretty big draw, but wouldn't have mana for Execute. Wrath, Feral Rage, and Mark of the Wild are the options. I kind of like the Wrath here. Uh, he's going to go for the Feral Rage. I mean, you can, both of them are versatile in terms of giving you removal options, but Wrath does give you that card draw, it's a little bit cheaper, so. so the good thing about Feral surprise. Rage here, though, Doer, is that if he's to put down a frothing Berserker, he'll be able to kill it really cleanly. Are you right about that? On turn three. And Pamela just gonna go use that execute that. I think that was a very good call from him. Yep. Well, it's one of the major execute targets in Yogdruid. So do you go for a card draw with Wrath here? I don't know if leaving a 1-1 one, one on the board really has any upside. Ooh, mystery card. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, you viewers at home, what do you think it is? I'm going to guess uh, Mulch. I'm going to guess Yogg. Aha! Ah, nice yeah. one! Wow! I am so good at this! You had literally... That was a very <laughs> unlikely card. Now, now like the, I like threw my hands in the air when that happened, so the crowd thinks I was just really happy he threw that. Biased caster. It's always fun. So bookworm will actually find a target. Does destroy any minions... Destroy a minion of three attack or lower. Yeah, as much as you want to use the first turn, you set up for that ET in the following turn. Oh, the mulch, the minions uh, were pretty scary, so you probably want to get rid of them as soon as possible. Well, the Feral Rage definitely getting some value there. Like you mentioned, Papa Smithy with the four attack being pretty useful against a lot of those warrior cards. Yeah, Corruptor and Frothing Berserker are both really nice clean kills for all the... So this Feral Dragon Rage. Warrior from Pombla has Isura. Shield block and Gorhal in it. Yeah, when you see the Gorhal, you can be pretty sure that there's going to be a little bit higher top end on it. I mean, Dragon. The, but the thing is, Dragon Warrior was kind of an extension of you know tempo mid range warriors. It was about the Dragon Tempo. This is yeah. a Dragon Control Warrior. It's something very different. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the inclusion of something like Bookworm uh, lets you be a little bit more flexible in that regard. Like uh, things like Nether Spite Historian as well helps you kind of refill your hand and make those choices with what dragon you want. So, yeah, you can kind of slow down Dragon Warrior now. It reminds me a little bit of uh, Dragon Paladin back in the sure. day. Sure. 
which sadly has not become quite as good as I hoped it would be. Yeah, I see it on the ladder, but it doesn't feel like even the new cards uh, really give it too much of an edge. I still need to experiment with it a little bit more, but... I remember when Dragon Consort was first announced, you just thought of that, and you're like, oh man, you know, if you, can, if you keep so the OP. coin, I've got Dragon Consort turn five, Ysera turn six, sounds amazing, but... No, you go uh, Chromagus turn six. It's only a variation of two. I said if you keep the coin. Oh, if you keep the coin. Yeah, I suppose. Coin wow. that Ysera, baby. Oh! Dude, that was quite the uh, quite the top deck there. So this one even uses Shield Slam. So is it more of a control warrior? Yeah, well, I... Yep. That's what, we, that's what we were touch. debating. Very much a dragon control warrior from Palm Lad. The mid-range side is gone. It's a card we haven't seen in the previous Yogg Druids. As we see Scenarius. I guess it's still an outside chance it's a ramp Druid, but I think you still include the Yogg in basically every archetype of Druid right now. Well, uh, short of beast. It looks like it's probably that token Yogg, right? And, and Scenarius does help you with that in terms of being able to buff your other minions if you've got a lot of stuff out there. The thing about running this particular Dragon Warrior in the meta we're in is that you could be super greedy with this list and your opponent doesn't necessarily know it. Like, you could not have any Ravaging Ghouls. Yeah. But because you had double Alex Shard's champion, they're like, well, I know this card, 30 cards, you know, card for card. So who knows where the cuts were made to fit in Bookworm, to put in Chill Mod, to fit in Ysera. Yeah, I mean, Sunagi has seen the shield block into the shield slime now, so he probably has a rough idea, but he still hasn't seen all these big cards. Short of Yogg, dealing with Ysera, very, very difficult for a druid. Mulch! Yes, that'll do the job, but yeah, there's other big threats coming that through from Harmblad. Mulch does do the job. Pablo was so afraid that this was going to be Yaxero. Yeah. And then he look, he sees a scenario and he's like, oh, okay, it's not Yaxero, I don't have to worry about this. Well, I wonder if Pompad runs Brawl in this. I'm not honestly too sure. It could be, I mean, this is. I was wondering the same thing. It's so experimental right now that it's hard to predict. You have to wonder if he's running lots of one offs because he's running so many dragons that the cuts have to come somewhere. Much deeper in his deck. It's certainly going to be Mulch this turn. Okay, there's the Arcane Golem. That's Whoa. pretty nice. Yeah, you, you absolutely have to Mulch this here, obviously. The Arcane Giant's down to three, so. Yeah. So you can play that and you can play Power of the Wild. <laughs> but that question that you asked kind of comes to rises to the top of your head is how much can you extend onto the board? How much do you trust that there is no brawl on the side of Palm Bites? He draws a Flame Reef Faceless from the Mulch. <laughs> I suppose, uh, wow, that's not bad. I suppose you do want to save uh, the part of the wild for FanDuel as well. And Sylvanas is a pretty sick draw to have here. Yeah, I mean, it's not an immediate answer to the 8-8 eight, eight Arcane Giant right now. I mean, it's really funny that Pomelay got the Flame with Faceless from the Mulch. Usually it's the other way around. Sure, you yeah. get your Flame with Faceless Mulch and get a uh, underwhelming minion from it. You've got time, though, if you're Palm Blad. You've got uh, some armor. You've certainly got enough minions to sustain yourself a little bit. But with that Ysera down so fast, what you start to kind of run into with this higher top-end Dragon Warrior is that when you run out of threats, you kind of run out of ways to win. So we'll see if maybe Deathwing is in here or not. But you get a little bit iffy. He might need to hope that he gets some good discoveries from Nether Spite Historian. If he's actually running that card, I think it's quite likely. Given I think how slow it's been. Yeah, I think you probably. I think you would. If you're running a, if you're running a deck like this, you're probably gonna run two of those. So no answer for Sylvanas, the Druid. I was wondering if Palm Dad would play it tricky because he got Nightmare. He could have, in a future turn, Sylvanas Nightmared and guaranteed a single card if it was just one threat played by Sanagi. But just plays a Sylvanas to contest the board for now. Is he going to make the trade himself? Afraid of I think he must be. Okay, that was the worst target for Pumpa. Yep. Pretty good for Sanagi, though. And he's going to get a pretty good turn out of this one. Oh, Mark of Yasharaj. It's nice to see. Uh, Starfire is not bad either, though. Yeah, especially because you know that this is a more control deck, but it's nice to go for the Done playing around Brawl. That's for 
Sure. Okay. Snoggy's really hoping that Palmba doesn't have an execute, because that would make this turn a lot easier for him. But One execute is gone from the Violet Teacher. Yep. Palmba can come pretty close to clearing the board here. He does have Slam and the Blackwing Technician, and also has the ability to clear with Fiery War Axe's turn and fit them all in. That's right, he can clear everything except for the 4 3 minion. Deciding about ordering here to how to play the turn. Yeah. Really doesn't want to drop Chilma. He wants to keep that dragon. We won't have to do it this time. We even develop more here. Nice spot given the state of the board for Sanagi the previous turn. You know, I kind of like just playing the uh, Corrupted Dragon Hawk with Mark of Yashiraj on there just because it's something that's going to demand an execute. And then you get to save it for your other stuff. And you just trade with the Blackwing Corruptor. We'll see. He's <laughs> got a few different options. Now he's just sees what he, you know, see what he draws at the Azure Drake too. Probably don't want to commit to the Ancient of War here, though. Oh, I don't know. Oh boy. Korean Cost is also <laughs> exclaiming loudly about that. I think I think there's a lot better options that you have if you're Snoggy. Uh, you know, by the same token, though, you could play that Ancient of War and hope that it draws out more removal. I mean, that's kind of the main goal of this turn is to try to make your opponent use their removal. This is definitely the safer play of some of the options that Sonagi had. You commit the least to the board. Well, that is Dragon for the Chill Mom. Yep, that's true. As you run out of steam here, Palm Blood, which was in a really nice controlling spot earlier. Sonagi's been wrestling control of this game since then, though. I think maybe you go Azure Drake and see what you draw and then you drop the Flame Wreath Faceless. You can trade with the 4-3. But do you want to use board. that dragon when you have a Chilma at hand? Do you really need the Death Rattle from Chilma? I think that's kind of the the big question that Palm Blad's wrestling with right now. It's a turn with Azure Drake. Yeah. Oh, Shield Slam. Shield Slam does actually kill the... As a Drake now, because it will do three plus one with the spell power. Yep, that's very true. So he could play Flame Wreath Faces and uh, still clear the board. Yeah. Nice turn for Palm Black. Also, Nagi's face, man. He's like, ah, life is hard. He's right, it is. It's a two for one out of the Ancient of War. I just feel like as long as Sonagi can top pick his Yasuo, he is going to be in a pretty good spot. Because yep. Pablo is running out of resources to oh. do the removal. But execute would be some sort of draw here. Has a slam in hand. Could also just uh, nightmare the 7-7. Seven -seven. Would also take out the Ancient of War. You can do it after the slam if you're really desperate. Yeah. But you can also just oh, Nightmare's baby. Azure Drake, too. Oh, this is the Execute. I, that the, is it's, the last Execute in the deck. It's tricky to use, yeah, because if you use this now, you're going to be a little bit worried that other big stuff is going to come out, because it, it will inevitably against this Druid deck. But he's going to try to get as much of an advantage as he can. Sanagi's so moment. animated in the booth. Literally intimating that he was throwing up how he felt about the Execute. That's First how Lumberdome feels all the time. True. Very icky. But yeah, Publin is setting up lethal this way, so it is definitely the right play for him to use execute. I don't think he should be worried about something like Yogg's around here. But this will be lethal for Palm Blad with the Nightmare. Yep. That's right, so Palm Blad's gonna take the first game of the match with his slower control dragon warrior. And it worked out well. Gambit of leaving the warrior fails at least in the context of game one, but the extra information this will give future opponents of Palm Blad, because certainly the power of the tempo dragon warriors can't be denied. The mid range warrior also commands a lot of respect. Thune warrior can do a job. Will other opponents feel 
like they can leave up the Dragon Warrior, the Dragon Control Warrior, as it may be just a little bit less consistent, a little bit less weaker against the field, now that that information is there for all to see. Uh, the question that may, a bit of an open question if Palm Black goes through to later rounds of the tournament. Yeah, it's certainly going to be man worthy, uh, even if it is a little bit different version of the Dragon Warrior than we've seen uh, lately. But, and, uh, you know, really knowing what's in it, it's, even if you do, it's hard to stop Control Warrior of any variety from doing what it's meant to do. Yeah. So, yeah, I think there's probably going to be some bans going Palm Blad's way if he wins this match today. Warlock Mirror. <laughs> Okay, so, ah, and Palm Blad is running the Forbidden Ritual, so that'll be something we haven't seen yet tonight from the cards we've seen out of the other Zoo Warlock decks we've checked out. Yeah, he's going to do wonders in the mirror matchup because you can take over the board really easily with that one card. Yeah. Yeah, the mirror is probably one of the best opportunities for that card, and he can certainly throw it back and draw later. This mirror is super snowbally. You get a big discard turn. You get an empty board, then pretty much lights out for your opponent. This is an interesting turn for Palm Vlad because both of his uh, one threes will get obviously handled easily by the flame. Uh, imp, so. Yeah. Yeah, I think Abusive Sergeant is a reasonable play. If you wanted to go really ham, you could go uh, Malkazar's Imp and then Soulfire. The Flame Imp, at least he gets the cycle. But this is certainly the safer play. Yeah, no, Void Walker to punish the Abusive Sergeant start. Was it better to play the Possessed Villager here, or better to tap? I think Possessed Villager is okay, because you can get one more attack on the Darkshire Councilman with the trade next turn. Oh, uh, now you're not going to, but, you know. You guys remember last year where we had awards for a most animated player? Sanagi is putting in a very big audition for that here. I think he is. This man loves him some right. Hearthstone, but has some strong emotions about him. I think Aldor won that award last yes, year, right? Yes, you're right. Not Okay, and here's the Soulfire. Ooh, this is a big one. He loses the Doom Guard. Oh, wow, man. he keeps it. That's big. I mean, uh, oh, okay, now it's <laughs> now it's not quite as great, but initially keeping the Doom Guard is good. Takes a really big board lead, and I don't really want to have to play some of these minions in hand right now. Honestly, it's looking like a pretty disordered turn. Silverware Golem, you want to get as a freebie from. The Doom Guard, and I guess starting the turn with a tap into Void Walker if you don't find something playable isn't ideal either. Yeah, even playing the Defender of Argus, it's not gonna get a clean kill on the Void Walker. Is he still gonna go for it? I don't know about this. I mean, it does give you the most stats on the board, I suppose. But it doesn't feel good if you're Sanagi, that's for sure. Much more clean turn for Palm Lad. Looking for a Silverware Golem to vindicate what's probably going to be a discard on some high-value cards that he has in hand. Yeah. Do you get rid of everything? Or do you just get rid of 1-1? One, one? I think you just get rid of the 1-1, one, one, yeah. Because you can. I mean, you can't get rid of the uh, Defender of Argus, so you might as well just throw two more damage to face. All right, time to hope you discard a silver work. And he does, okay. So he gets a 3-3 at least. That's what he needed as well. Yeah. This is such a huge board swing. Defender Vargas is pretty good here though for Palm Blad. He may just bypass it though. I mean, if you're gonna play Doom Guard. All right, wow, he keeps it. Yeah, he doesn't get to keep these Doom Guard, bud. Gets the draw though, because he has the Malkazar's Imp out. Yeah, keeping the Defender of Argus is better anyway for Palm Blad right now. But I mean, isn't this better than just playing the Defender of Argus? You can actually get rid of the Steam Guard from opponent and keep the Steam Guard alive. I mean, getting the hand refill from the Malkazar's M2 is really nice. I guess he's just gonna leave that Doom Guard left alone. Yeah, well, he's got plenty of health, so he can afford it. Ah, but big punishment here with the Soul Fire. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a bummer. Watch, he's gonna life tap into Silverware Golem now. 
Wait for it. Oh, no. You already used all He's your... Okay. You already used all your predictions on the mystery card being mulched, though. I think so. Your face? Wow. So not worried about any other potential draws from the Malkazar Zimp. Ooh, Argus and a Direwolf Alpha playable this turn could lead to some decent trades. Won't be able to take out the Doom Guard, but has already ignored it previously. Can also just load up and hold on to the Direwolf Alpha for future turns. Yeah, maybe it was a bit greedy from Humble's end oh, to leave that Doom Guard up. I, I, I actually agree. I don't think it was necessary. He has a couple of card lead, but given the health, Totals and the Warlock Hero Power is not that consequential. Alright. Well, Pomblad certainly has the board right now. Let's see what Sanagi taps into, and another Dark Wolf Alpha is not really going to be what he wants to see here. So he can clear out. Two I damage off the board. I guess this Doomguard is almost like the Sea Giant in the mirror matchup. You just have one Sea Giant versus like this gigantic board. Yeah. So although the Sea Giant may be powerful and it's really uh, threatening. Is that lethal? Yeah, it might be lethal fight. here. Let's count the damage. It's two, four, six, Five. eight, ten. One damage off lethal. He can potentially draw a lethal. Yeah. You can swipe tap here. And if you don't get it, then you can go for some board clear. Either way, Palm Vlad looking pretty safe. Nice. Oh, there's a lethal. Okay. So 2-0 lead for Palm Vlad in this best of seven now. Still needs wins with Druid and Mage, but a strong start for the veteran. Finds a win with Warrior, Wall Up. Feels comfortable. Vindicated in the end for taking the risky line and leaving up Doomguard for as long as he did. But Palm Vlad not wanting to be eliminated in the first round, in the quarterfinals of this tournament. And looking pretty commanding in doing so. Yeah, I mean, there's really not much to say. Uh, Paul Blad's been playing it pretty cleanly, and it's given him two wins. And Sanagi, uh, he's played the Druid, he's played the Warlock. He knows that Mage and Druid are left. So we'll see what he decides gives him the best chance. He's got to get a win with everything in the end anyway, so... It's all about comfort, I think, for Sanagi going into game number three. Elimination format, conquest, ruminations about what to play. Uh medium value at best, but in the end of game three, Palm Blad will be playing Druid for the first time. Sticking with the discard Warlock is so yeah. yeah, this matchup is definitely going to be much tougher for Druid. As we have seen from well, that's a start. this game. That's definitely a start, though, for the Zoo Warlock as well. Yeah, on the coin, that's a pretty decent way to go. Living Roots is a must-keep for Palm Vlad. You need to be able to deal with that Flame Imp. That's and, a uh, hand from Palm Vlad as well. Yeah, Palm Vlad may just play this Living Roots just to get the uh, two minis out. I mean, you can still deal with the Flame Imp. It doesn't change that unless the uh, unless the uh, Voidwalker comes out. And guess what? So I'm really happy to see that Living Roots come out. <laughs> so Nagi just seems yeah. hyped about Hearthstone. It's good to see. Well, he's got the bot lane duo. Voidwalker, Flame Imp. If he goes for it, it's going to get punished by Wrath. Yeah. It's going to be Palm Bad using his whole turn and give tempo and board lead to Sanagi, though. Yeah, I guess that you are preventing Palm Bad from using the Wild Breath, but he only goes for the Void Walker instead. It's being a little bit on the greedy side, going for a bigger uh, knife juggler turn, I suppose. So leaving Palm Bad to actually use that Wild Growth instead of giving him the pressure. Wow. Palm Blight, it seems to be running the Malagos version. When you see Moonfire, you can be pretty sure that Malagos is in the deck. Yeah, I'd say so. And does the knife juggle correctly? <laughs> Left one. Yes, it does. Good start for Sanagi. Obviously, Palm Blight's got the wrath. He's got ways to deal with this annoying knife juggler. Have to invest into swipe this turn. No, definitely not. So I guess just wrath and hero power down the void walker. Just in case you want to use swipe next turn. Yep, seems reasonable. 
sounds like a solid line of play. Yeah, you can also do the Zoo Drake into Moonfile, deal two damage if yeah. any of the big threats come down, like Knife Juggler or Flame Imp. I like hitting this uh, Voidwalker for one, just to Me bring too. it down, like we mentioned, to uh, be swipeable. Oh, Sanagi got a lot of good options. Just to load the threats on the board. Yeah. And it's kind of annoying for Drew to deal with this. Palm Glad can remove some of it. As a Drake Moonfire, at least cycles and removes the Direwolf Alpha. Yeah, it's certainly and better than the swipe now. The board too. Yep. Wrath is not too bad either. You can do the swipe and wrath. Like yep, next turn he'll be able to do that for sure. Uh, okay. But are you willing to <laughs> give up? I think not, but we'll see. Uh, is he going to go for it? <sighs> Seems. Uh, I, I agree with going for it. You need to preserve your board. You need to preserve your board. And he gets a little bit lucky, able to play the Darkshire Librarian, and this is really the best case scenario, because you don't need to discard anything, and you still get the draw when it dies. Still board clear available for Palm Blad. uses his whole turn, though. Well, if it clears the board, I think he'll be okay with it. Yeah, he's also getting a draw for that, which is always nice. Yep. As long as no cards, but well, her power at least allow him to refill. That's a good start. Oh, we've been playing for four hours. Time to take a break. No, never. That's a little message set at the bottom of the screen. In Korea, you get warnings about how long you've been playing. In every game except Overwatch, interestingly. That's right. So you can play Overwatch forever. Yay! I would, if I could. We've got Hearthstone I'd, I'd business I'd take breaks for Hearthstone, too. though, for sure. So Power can actually do the ramp up from the Norris, just like how Alpha did, and set up for his Yaxero. Yeah. It might not be a bad idea, but he also has a fair rage cure power to Quite. kill that Dersha oh, Cosmo okay. immediately if he chooses to do so. He gets the board lead as well, because he can put out the Living Roots, it's one once. Yeah, I like the ramp, and he's going to do it. Goes for the Feral Rage, and so uh, I'm glad maybe praising Yogg next turn. Seems like the way, and Sonagi already knows. He knows I'm, I'm what pretty, oh yeah. that is. I'm pretty hyped about Sonagi reacts to Yogg Saron. I know, right? It's my new favorite YouTube series. Sonagi reacts. Yeah. Well, uh, buff up the Darkshire Councilman with the Abusive Sergeant. Throw down that Doom Guard. Go for it. I don't know, do you maybe just not play the Doomguard into the Yogg Do you? I mean, it's the slower play, but at this point in the game, I think you really need to go all in here. Is he actually going to trade? Wow. He trades with one of them. But it's just a 1-1, one, one, and it, that one damage, yes. it's not good with that. Yeah, you say that now. But when Palmblad, like, pyroblasts himself in the face and somehow lives with one health. Power shots not. Ah, uh, there's the ball. Oh, there. okay, yeah, there's the two. There's a card draw. Yeah. Arcane Giant. That's three. He can actually innovate out Arcane that, Giant. Yeah. Wow. That's huge. <laughs> that's that's game ending right there. Double. <laughs> All right, he gets a couple silverware golems. It's nice too, I guess. Well, this was a good right, turn let's for play Paul Flynn. Eight, eight. Let's do this. Yeah, why not? Feels good, man. Sonaki's face says, I expect that, yeah. Well, yeah. a couple secrets out. I, I think uh, I think the only secret that's really out right now is that the game is over. <laughs> Palmblad's going to take a 3-0 lead here, it looks like. Are we finally going to see a 4 0 game today? Maybe. A lot to ask for, but certainly looking more and more likely. Uh oh. Eye uh, for an eye, <laughs> boom! <laughs> He was hoping that would uh, send back damage from another Doom Guard somehow, but nope. It's not going to be about it. I mean, the game's not over yet, but it's it's quote unquote over now. They might actually trade with the Knife Juggler. He was running a yeah. Forbidden Ritual on his own list, uh, playing around that card. I think you definitely yeah. trade with the Knife Juggler. There's I mean, no reason not. Yeah, I mean, if you trade here, then there's just zero chance that you're going to lose the game, so why not go for it? Oh, I heard I was not out for the new card, sadly. 
Three damage right now doesn't look ideal. Not great. Nope, man. So it will be a 3 0 lead for Paul Blad. Only needs a win with that mage to move himself on to Saturday. See some people watching on, including Alpe in the crowd. I believe we will have Alpe versus Palm Blad if Palm Blad has taken this down, but we'll get confirmation of that at the end of the night. End of the night. Now, just after 10 p.m. at Korean Standard Time, it's looking nice. So Nagi will need to reverse sweep Palm Blad if he is to continue in the series. Single win of Palm Blad with Mage. It's in both Freeze and Tempo Mage to pretty similar degrees of likelihood. And Medivh will take the final game. Ooh, Cat Trick. All right. That is neat. Cat Trick is uh, probably one of the better secrets to have against Mage. That is really pretty. Um, that, that's my first time looking at Cat Trick and the Golden Card. And the cat actually vanishes. It I didn't know that. In and out. Well, it is a cat trick, you know. A pretty good one. It is. <laughs> Some green. No standard heroes two. here. Double cat trick. Yeah, so this is really good when your opponent has a coin and they haven't played it yet. I wonder if he's considering playing Babylon. I think that would be a pretty <laughs> ideal play this turn. The Korean subtitle says it says cat trick, but you actually get a panther. Well, panther's sort of a cat. Yeah, it's a kind it's of a cat. Ca it's a big cat. Marble it's kind of a cat. We'll play on curve. So we're not going to activate the secret yet. Not going to worry about explosive trap either. <laughs> that means we're going to see some bow value. Not guaranteed, as right now there are no spells apart from a coin that look likely to be played in the near future. So if you attack the uh, Cult Sorcerer, it confirms that it's not Explosive Trap. If you attack the Mana Worm, then you also confirm that it's probably not Explosive Trap. Well, I mean, you might. All right, yeah. I'm just going to say, all right, I'm just going to get rid of the minion that poses more of a threat right now. So this way, Pamela is more inclined to use a spell to buff up the minion. That's right. First babbling book gives oh frost nova, okay. It's a card that might come in handy later on. But what does the second babbling book give you? Oh polymorph. That is huge actually. When you know you're gonna be facing that Savannah High main most likely, that's, that's very big. Be a bit bold. Okay, he's gonna go for it. Wow, just going for the board clear. Do you think... Okay, so he is going to just go to face with that. I don't know about that Unleash the Hounds right there. His other option was kind of grandmother hero power. Yep. Which I didn't have a very big problem with. Yeah, a bit curious, as you say. Yeah. I think maybe... I, well, to be fair, you're not going to get a lot of big Unleash the Hound turns against this uh, Tempo Mage. And this is so going to be fun. There is that argument, but still. Guess what? Arcane Blast is not going to be able to be used this turn. It's going to be something he can handle the Panther with later on, at least. The Cat Trick does work really well against the Acid Drake. And he has another Cat Trick. Yeah. Again. even need to sacrifice the 4 2. Yeah, he can still take some damage. But he doesn't want to take a whole lot more. Amusingly, the Arcane Blast will just lead to another cat trick. Yeah. It's kind of funny. You are going to give an extra charge to the bow at the same time. Yeah. What can you do, though? Can't really play around it. I mean, Cat Trick is just such a great card to have against Tempo Mage. Things are going pretty well for Sanagi until now, when his big power play with the Savannah High Main is going to be quickly answered by the Polymorph. It will be, but uh, it does also leave the 4 2 Panther up. Or actually, now it doesn't if he decides to cross bolt it. To use a polymorph gear, but how do you get rid of that 14 point there? I mean, cross cross bolted. You've got Yaxaran, you can use spells like this. Yeah. <laughs> Sanagi. He said no out loud, just to be clear. Mm -hmm. 
and the board is handled. So uh, yeah, I think Kindly Grandmother's Snipe is a pretty good play here. They could apply some pressure. This could be a kill command turn. Uh, actually, yeah, I mean, I guess with you, where you've got uh, Call the Wild coming next turn. Well, can you set a lethal if you do that? That's what, call I'm, the wild? That's so what I'm wondering, That's what I'm wondering, yeah. It would be 11 damage this New turn if you used count? everything, and then Call of the Wild only represents five damage itself. I don't think it's enough, right? Nope. I mean, you wouldn't attack with the bow this turn. You don't expect any taunts? Well, I guess there could be mirror images. On well, the side. but you, yeah, you're playing another secret, which is the easiest activator, no and sin. you're definitely gonna, you're most likely gonna get another charge with your weapon. Yeah. So yeah, you'd be doing eight damage this turn, I suppose. 11's a pretty risky health total for a tempo mage, not expecting to be running the ice barrier or the ice block. I guess if you do it this way, you're not gonna have it. Or if you play the kill command, you wouldn't have had enough mana for the hero bar. So I do like saving the kill command for now. Yeah, I prefer the hero bar here. Yeah. I mean, that's. You generally want to go towards the hero bar if you have a choice. 4 4. It's well, a decent body on the board, but. Uh, this turn plays itself. Yeah. So if you want to play around Flame Strike, then you can make one trade with Offer. Considering trading Huffa just because, as you say, the kindly grandmother death rattle is a Nurian egg esque uh, factor to play around a board AoE. Yeah, I kind of like trading Huffa here because then you have something to use with your kill command almost certainly. Without I mean, needing to play the infested wolf. wolf. And you can do everything infested wolf, hero power, kill command. Sure. Puts it all to face. Seems like Palmblad's hopes of the sweep are dead. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I mean, again, when you start with two cat tricks, it's pretty good for the hunter. Yeah, especially against Tempo Mage, because usually it's not that great of a card, but because yeah. Palmblad was just forced to use the spells over and over again. Yep, it's a very good matchup. And uh, with the Secret Hunter, I mean, you'd imagine that the uh, Cloak Huntress is in there too, so not going to see it this time around, I suppose. No confirmation but on that, but given how many secrets he was running, almost wow. certainly there. When you see Snipe in Cat Trick, if he's not running it, I, I don't know what kind of deck this is. Cat Trick was certainly a trick that got him a single win, and we have seen reverse sweeps before. It's certainly not out of the realm of possibility that Sonagi will knock off Palm Lab. Palm Lab just really couldn't get it going that game. Every time he made a big play, like for example, pointing out the Azadrake to get a big tempo lead, Patrick punished him for it. So Hunter off the board for Sanagi. Common Warlock and Druid still to find a victory. Yep, so we'll see if Palmblad can grab one in the next three games. It's still looking very good for him in the series overall. Mage versus Mage this time around. I'm sorry, Mage versus Warlock this time around. Certainly a matchup where Crazed Alchemist can get a lot of value against things like Doomsayer, but this is not one of the freeze mages that we've seen so far this tournament. You can still get a pretty good value out of the water elements, though. Sure. As we're nearing four and a half hours into this broadcast, my brain is starting to turn off. All right, Doa. Shouldn't be too much more to go, though. This has always been historically a pretty good matchup for the Warlock, although we saw one... Tempo May check the win. I believe it was in the first series of the night. Yeah, I like this putting a little bit more pressure on. You don't have any guaranteed value out of the Malkazar's Imps just yet, so you might as well save one. Uh, the Mana Worm. It's one turn too late. Yeah. Because you're really tempted to coin Forgotten Torch on the uh, Wolf maybe this time around that or you're coining out the water elemental next turn you'd have to imagine yeah that's true too i like the hero it's, part here it's tricky well like you said yeah you want to coin out the water elemental probably but it's tricky to try to figure out what the actual value of malkazar's imp is on the board because you really can only tell that if you knew what's in your opponent's hand so it's, it's a tricky one as far as like 
how to choose to remove things. It's getting tricky here. He wants to have the Direwolf Alpha live longer, and at full wow. toughness, it will. I guess so. Interesting. I mean, just again, really putting on the pressure here. Trying to get as much damage in as he can before the AoE starts to come out from the main. Very easy to kill this Water Elemental. Both minions on the right side of the Direwolf Alpha will take it out. Wow. Well, of course, Seeker's looking Let's more and more likely it. to get value here. I mean, if he plays Malkazar's Imp, he's got it this turn, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, your opponent's going into turn four. They're not going to have the AoE to handle this. I say absolutely go for it. He doesn't make a positioning mistake and take out the Water Elemental easily. He will not. It's fine. Put that on the left now. Yeah. There you go. Man, she has a Mana Claw. She's super happy. She never gets played. All right, really good start for Sanagi. He's looking very confident. You're not expecting Frost Nova from this deck? Uh, no. So, you're kind of boned if you're Farm Lab. You can't even kill this, uh, I guess you could fireball the Direwolf Alpha. It feels bad, man. Yeah. All right, well, he reduces a little bit of the damage anyway, but that Reliquary Seeker is really starting to be a problem here. Eight damage off lethal, but an amazingly powerful board for Sanagi, and might be our first series that doesn't go 4-1. You'd have to be pretty crazy to imagine any result other than Sanagi taking down this game. Yeah, really. Yeah, I like the trade first to guarantee that the knife goes to face. Yeah, especially uh, if because he... even if the knife had, didn't really mean anything, you're just wasting one damage. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna play the knife truck a second. Okay. No, we're just not gonna play it. Oh, he's gonna play it. All right. If you play the Darkshire Councilman first, you can really make an argument to wait. But in the end, he was so far ahead, it didn't matter. And so yeah, Sanagi gets a second win, and we may have ourselves an actual series here. Still needs a win with the Druid that has fell once and the Shaman, but the Warlock was the deck that he was struggling with, was 0-2 in the series, picks up the win, and suddenly, what looks like a secure series for Palmblad is getting closer and closer to parity. Could be two remaining games and an unlikely comeback win for Sonata. Yeah, Druid or Shaman? I wonder what he's gonna go with. I say Shaman just because Druid has always had a very bad matchup against Temple Mage. There we go. Might as well see if you can. Yeah, might as well see if you can take it to the last game. Look at that starting hand for Palm Blatt. It's beautiful. That is pretty good. Good start though for Sanagi as well. I guess you can argue for playing Babbling Book over Mana Worm. You're trying to play your red rock by weapon? Yeah. Or, uh, you know, lightning bolt, I suppose, too. But is it too bad if your opponent plays a one mana card removal on your one mana? That's fair point. One three at turn two? Oh, flame strike. I, I think I kind of like saving this because now you can save the coin for flame waker. And it's a little bit greedy. If Sanagi has a really fast start, you're going to regret it, but. As we can see, Sanagi, you know, he's got Feral Spirits, but beyond that, it's not going to be an ultra, ultra fast beginning for the Shaman, probably. Bomblad doesn't really have an attractive turn two play. So Apprentice would at least be something that requires removal, but you gain no value from the spell reduction effect. I think it's okay for him to play the Sorcerer's Apprentice here. I don't know about this hero part because you're giving like so many turns for Sonagi, you're not letting him use the reactive cards and prevent him from doing all these active plays like playing the Feral Spirits. Alright, so Sonagi putting himself in a position where he can play the Flame Breed face this next turn. And suddenly this Flame Waker not looking quite as good. Move anything, you. I mean, you could just play the Forgotten Torch on one of them. You could source of Prentice right, coin Forgotten Torch, but again, you know, you're kind of committed to saving the coin now for the Flame Waker. 
Yeah, and even if you use it twice, you're using one card to get rid of half a card. Half a card. Yeah. Well, I mean, Palm Blad's kind of ended up in a, a tricky situation here. All you need to do, though, is hold out until the Flame Strike comes in and kind of hope that they don't play any of their higher health minions. It'll be as early as turn six. He's held onto the coin this long. Again, no clear line of play from Palm Blood. So far, he's hero powered twice. Only a babbling balk is an active play on turn one. It feels bad, but I mean, you're going to get the roaring, the roaring torch back later, so it's sort of half a card, but yeah, it's still not, not the greatest turn for Palm Blood. This deck with no taunt is facing in hand right now. 11 direct damage plus 16 from the Doomhammer, so closer and closer to Sonagi popping off. Well, I just feel like Pavlid is playing this maybe a little too safely. Too I might be too late to change that now, but I, I think, yeah, being kind of greedy and saving the coin for so long is cost him a bit in terms of board control. Well, not even just saving the coin, I think he probably should have played the Sorcerer's Apprentice at turn two. And just like force out that Rothfire weapon or Lightning Bolt at turn yeah. two from his opponent by playing the Mana Worm at turn one. Because what is a big deal? Like, if your opponent, once again, if your opponent plays Lightning Bolt or Rothfire weapon at turn two, that's not an issue for you. You're probably happy to see that. Well, it's gonna be the flame with faceless. No spell power. Here we go. It's gonna be yeah, a little bit tougher for Sonagi to get in there with the taunts. Well, Pumla might still want to save the coin for the flame strike. Next turn. That's true. Once you get a hit onto the feral spirit, then he could trade the mana worm. Gets it. Wow. Lightning Storm. Yeah, three mana crystals, so if he's running a tech Lightning Storm, this would be a great time for it. At least some people are on that card. You're right. And there's so much direct damage in Sonaga's hand still. Well, we definitely have to kill that Flame Maker here. Yeah, could just Lightning Bolt it. Yep, that's probably a pretty good idea. So suddenly, Flame Strike doesn't look quite as great, but with Firelands Portal, maybe he can get something. There was no Taunt Totem. Firelands to Portal trade would have been a possibility. Yep. Flame Strike trade is a possibility, but you're using a seven, I guess in this case, six mana spell to remove a four mana creature, and also giving up one of your premium AoEs might be the only one in the list, but decides to try and get the board lead now while he can. Yeah, it is so unlikely for you to actually get a charge minion from the Firelands Portal. And while you don't really want to do a flame strike on three totems, you might just have to. Oh. Be two damage to the face, and in hand we're talking about a lot of burst damage over multiple turns. Bamba has some higher damage options here. So if he fireballs the face, he's got a decent chance to take these down. Oh, that doesn't help, but you got to go for it, right? I mean, he has to give himself a chance to possibly win. Wow. Oh, and they both went to face. That's, that's tough. It's just... That is the worst. It has not been Paul Blad's game for the last couple games. Speaking of burst damage, 14 this turn from Sanagi. But also just take out the... the minion and go face. That's probably the smarter line of play. Yeah, you generally want to just use your weapons to protect the minions you have on the board. Not trade unless you absolutely have to. Flame Waker, one of those minions, but Ragnaros, given that he can build up the board with hero power and a 1-1, less of a must remove. Got something anyway. I mean, kill the best target, but this is Shaman. It's one of the worst classes to play your rag against. Yeah. Board is massive. Six more damage this turn. The Firelands Portal not too helpful either. Not even sure what he's looking for. Swing back in. Don't know how many AoEs he's running. One will be big here. That is 
is not a big card. Well, if he uh, gets Reckless Rocketeer after using the Fire Lance portal to go face, then he can kill him with Ragnaros. <laughs> so there's a lethal possibility, but Missed no. lethal. Not gonna, <laughs> not gonna go for it. Oh, hey, a taunt. That's, that's not bad though. Crazed Worship is really big here. Yeah, a three-six taunt can maybe make a bit of a difference. Maybe. Will it though? I feel like you're just nope. gonna get. Yeah. Oh, okay. Never mind. mind. Nope. It won't. <laughs> we are gonna go to wow. game number seven. Wow. Yeah. Palmblad, the man, the model of consistency, is one game away of being reverse swept by Sanagi. Insane stuff here, but classes have lined up really well against the Tempo Mage, and now with the fourth attempt at a win for the Tempo Mage against the Druid, which. We have to mention is probably the best matchup available for the mage of all the decks that Sonagi brought. Yeah, that's why Sonagi was holding on to this deck so long. He wanted to tilt his opponent as much as possible before going into the unfavorable matchup. Is Palm a man that's prone to tilt though, or is so? It's a question that Not really, but everyone tilts at times, right? Yeah, this is this is the time. Final game Maggie. of the night, final game of the quarterfinals. <laughs> Sanagi versus Palmblad. Winner goes through the semifinals. Loser leaves with nothing. The BlizzCon dreams in tatters. And you both Mage versus the York Druid. You do not often see a reverse sweep in a best of seven in Hearthstone, but we might see it right here. Ramp in the starting hand for Sanagi. All right, yeah. Let's get the ramp going next turn. Right, so Palmblad again is going to feel a lot of pressure to try to put pressure on his opponent. We'll go all in here with the Nourish play, but going to decide to play it slower with the Wild Growth. Make sure that Sonagi misses that Valley right. so much that he pulled away. Yeah, a bit. Feral Rage here is desperately needed for Sonagi. We'd be rampant, boys. Yeah, no way, though, to... Oh, oh no, he's doing it. He's going oh, wow. as ham as possible. <laughs> yeah, he's like laughing a... in the booth. Yeah, I, I mean, the turn five scenarios, you know, like you do. Or rather, like, turn three this game. All right, well, uh, good luck, Paul. Well, he's got two frost bolts. Yeah, I mean, honestly, he's fairly well equipped to handle this. Um, if you put double frost bolt in... He's gonna try it. Speaking of going all in. He could actually clear this board. He could. Oh, nice. All right, he doesn't Sanagi. doesn't have to clear the board anymore. Sanagi, Sanagi is, is in shock. There, yeah. He's like, all right, well played. <laughs> and you're right, he doesn't have to, but why not go for it, right? Get rid of it now while you have a chance. Sanagi reserves his judgment, so well, a spell pointed at it. You may want to save this, though, because the damage could be better on other minions later on. I thought maybe he was going to oh, say, oh, dude. I mean, Palma just knew it all along. It's not a good support about that. Well, is it time to start ramping towards the Oxfron? Oh, absolutely, yeah. You have no way to deal with this flame work. You need to go as fast towards that Yogg as you can. Palma senses it right away. <laughs> I feel like the moment that a Druid uses Nourish for the ramp, we, we know the story. Yeah. And it's going to be Palmblad just applying pressure of his own. Well, Firelands Portal could be uh, pretty cool to lethal next turn. In fact, uh, it would be. Yeah, Snuggy doesn't even have two turns. Uh, is it? He's dead. He I believe. is. I believe he is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, s Five damage. plus five. That's uh. Yeah, that's it. So, Hallblad takes it in easily the fastest game of the night we've seen, but. Certainly one of the most interesting ones. There it is, Firelands Portal for the win. Yeah, but Sonaki killed the wrong minion there, right? I think so. That's yeah, like, probably. But he claps. He's being a good sport about it. So close to a reverse sweep, but finally Palmblad gets the good end of a Tempo Mage matchup. Takes out the Druid, shakes his head. That went about three games longer than he hoped for, potentially. But Palmblad will be making it through to the semifinals, and his dreams of making it to BlizzCon are still alive. Yeah, kind of a crazy end of the day there, but I think Palmblad will take it. Yeah, and out of these two, I do believe that Pummel was a better player in terms of the decisions that he made throughout. I mean, uh, Sanagi obviously looks like he's been having a great time. <laughs> uh, what do you say? I mean, that's Hearthstone, right? I think you say the Sanagi 
Robbie bought himself a lot of fans in this series, showed a lot of emotion, loved watching him in the camera, embraced to be one of his idols in Palm Blad. They're out of here. To end the game, they're oh, out of here. It. We're back here. <laughs> Hi, guys. Wow, okay. Well, the player's deciding it's time to go. And of course, we don't have pack opening today. So right. we're just going to go over the results in a couple of moments. Has been a long night's Hearthstone. Four and a half hours of games, some fun ones. Definitely not much more fun than that last series, which was pretty crazy. But going over those results, your four semi-finalists, Air Tracks, took out Inventor 4-1. 4-1 was the story for Stilo over Kai Zero for Alpe over Ghost, but not the story for Palm Bladu. Was knocking on the door of a 4-0 sweep. Ended up going up 4-3 over Sanagi. So our semi-finals, Air Tracks versus Stilo, Alpe versus Palm Bladu. And we've got some very clear storylines here. Two relatively unknown players, especially to the Hearthstone Masters Korea fans. And Stilo and Palmblad trying to add another notable name to the APAC Summer Crew. Well, Airtrex Air might not have much of tournament experience as a player, but he has been doing a lot of castings. So he's very well known to the scene itself. Yeah, and I thought Airtrex played uh, pretty well, honestly, in his match too. So it'd be cool to see any one of those four go through. I think they all certainly deserve it after the play we've seen tonight. We'll renew our matches, the last three, two semifinals, and the grand final All Conquest Best of Seven will be played from 6 p.m. Korean Standard Time, the same time you tuned in today on Saturday, two days' time, once again live at Seoul OGNE Stadium with what is to be the last OGN Hearthstone broadcast before BlizzCon. Apex Summer running into BlizzCon is the Hearthstone way forward for the year. Yeah, and uh, BlizzCon is going to be really exciting because uh, no matter who gets through on Saturday, because we had Korean players win both of the Asia Pacific Championships already this year. They've Korea's look like, uh, I think, the strongest country in the Asia Pacific region overall uh, by quite a bit, aside from a few exceptions in maybe um, uh, Pinping Ho and Naviud. But uh, overall, I and uh, oh, there's a couple others too. I, there's a couple others I should mention. But overall, Korea's looked the strongest. So going into BlizzCon, is this finally the year that we're going to see a uh, Korean champion? I think there's a better chance now than ever. Well, we're going to close the broadcast. So for Haruso and Doa, it's been a great night. Handsome guy and Dayoni at BlizzCon is going to be exciting. Who will join them? We'll find out very shortly in this particular time in just two days' time as we're blowing through the APAC qualifiers and lot to be excited about in today's games. We'll be sticking with the same decks when you come back on Saturday, so no adjustments there. Plenty of discard Warlock seems to be the story. Yeah, I'm um, really picking up that list in particular in a huge way, so uh, I'm not so sure about it, though. We'll see We'll see if it sticks around later on. We get to reserve our judgment. The meta is still to settle. Join us on Saturday, 6 p.m. for the conclusion of the tournament.